Hello everyone, welcome to Cabbage Patch Soap. My name is Laura and today I am going to try to make holographic soap. A while ago I was watching a video on how to cook that by Anne Reden and she made this beautiful holographic chocolate using diffraction grating sheets. The way that these sheets work is there are tiny scratches in the plastic and they diffract the light and make these pretty rainbows. Since it worked on her chocolate, um, I'll put a video down below to show you, I wanted to try it on soap. Now I wanted to try both melt and pour and regular cold process soap. So here I am trying uh, with the melt and pour. So I'm going to put a little bit on there and then as, because the melt and pour is hot and very liquid, it spreads a lot. So I'm going to give it a little bit of time to cool and then add some more to the top. But I wanted to make sure that initially I put down a thin layer to make sure it got into the uh, the grating of the plastic. So I waited a little while for the soap to set up and now I'm going to peel it off. However, unfortunately, I had put the soap on the wrong side of the plastic. So there is no pretty hollow no rainbows on the soap sadly. So I decided to do it again and this time on the correct side of the diffraction sheet. So here I am doing the whole thing over again on the other side. And just like before I started out by pouring the thin layer first and then piling on some soap just to, I don't know, make the piece a little bit thicker and help it hold up a little bit better. Okay, so wait a little while, come back. And just like last time, I'm going to peel it off the sheet. One of the things I wanted to test was to see if the plastic could hold up to the heat of the melt and pour. And it seems to have held up just fine, so that's good to know. Here I'm trying to catch it in the light and get the camera to pick it up. So since the regular light is not working for this, I'm going to move the lamp. And we have hollow soap. It is so pretty. Look at all those rainbows. This looks really awesome in person. You can see where the plastic warped a teeny tiny bit and made a ripple on the soap, but it's totally fine. You can still see the hollows. And now I'm just trying to get the rainbows to show without the glare of the light interfering. But because this is an actual pattern in the soap, it's not, you know, nothing transferred to the soap. Um, just by rubbing my finger over it, I'm able to disturb that, uh, that pattern just enough to where the hollow goes away. So you can see the second fingerprint there. There's no, there's no rainbows there anymore. So it's really delicate. This is not going to be something that I'll be able to, you know, ship or, um, you know, package because if anything touches the surface, it'll get disrupted. So in her video, Anne Reden made these cute little chocolate cubes. And again, again, a problem as you'll see, because once again, I was trying to put the little plastic sheets on these tiny little cubes of soap and uh, put them the wrong side down. But in her video, she made some cute little chocolate cubes that had little squares cut out of the sheet on them. And uh, it made the little squares of chocolate hollow, which I thought was really cute. So I was trying to do something similar here, but you know, as I said, I put them the wrong way down and there is no hollow. So I'm going through each one because I wasn't sure if maybe, you know, maybe some of these I had put down the right way around. Also, I want to point out here, I'm not wearing any gloves, and the reason for that is because I don't intend to, you know, sell this, this soap. It was, this was purely just an experiment, and um, this soap will just be used for my own personal uses, so there's no need to uh, wear gloves for that. And as you can see, each little cube of soap is lacking the pretty rainbows. So clearly, I have managed on every single one of these to put the plastic on the wrong way down somehow. That's okay, because I can just melt it and do it all over again, which is exactly what I'm about to do. So here are the failure cubes, and there's a little glass pot, and I'm just going to melt these down. Melt and pour soap can be melted on the microwave. I do not have a microwave, so I am going to be doing it on a double boiler, so it takes a little time. So this time I just made two of the cubes. I figured there, you know, if it works, it works. There's no need to, um, you know, do a whole bunch of cubes this time around. So I just did the two and we'll see if this worked this time. And we have 
rainbows. It worked. So now I've got, instead of little chocolate cubes with rainbows, I've got little soap cubes with rainbows. They're absolutely adorable. It's only unfortunate that it won't last longer. If there was a way for me to preserve this, I think it would be great to, you know, make these and offer them to people. I might be able to come up with something, but as these are right now, of course, all it takes is somebody to touch them and the rainbows will go away. I'm sure that change in uh, humidity and, and other things will probably affect this as well. But it's really cool to look at, you know, when I first take the sheet off. So there's another look at the pretty rainbows. All right, so now I want to try it with the regular soap and see if we can get the same pretty hollow rainbows from this diffraction grating. And as usual, I am mixing the um, lye water into the soap. And of course this time I'm wearing gloves to protect my hands from the lye. And here I've set up two containers. So my plan is I'm going to have one soap that's completely completely normal, nothing in it, just the soap and the, I mean, sorry, just the oil and the light waters. Then that white one has some titanium dioxide to make it white and a little bit of fragrance oil. And then the dark one has some activated charcoal and a little bit of fragrance oil. So the reason for me doing this is to see if any of these additives will affect the diffraction grating. If it's going to, you know, damage the plastic by using the fragrance oil um, or if the additives like the uh, titanium di dioxide or the activated charcoal will prevent the um, the soap from getting into the grooves and and, and getting that pretty um, hollow. So that's the uncolored one. It has nothing added to it, just the oil and the light water. There's no fragrance and no colorant in this one. I'm just going to tap out the air bubbles, hopefully. And then I'm going to place the diffraction greeting on top. I probably should have put this in the bottom of the mold and then poured the soap batter on top, but I wasn't sure if it would float or what would happen to it. So I decided for this, I was just going to set it on top. And then here is the batter that has the titanium dioxide and a little bit of fragrance oil. I also use two completely different types of fragrance oils. Um, one is a more floral and the other is more citrus. So uh, because those, those two types of uh, fragrances tend to affect soap completely differently, I thought it'd be a good way to, a good, you know, test to have two, two that are uh, different. Although looking back, I probably should have had, you know, colorant in one and then fragrance in another, just so that we would know what affected it. But I wasn't really going for a true science experiment here. I just wanted to know if it would work at all. And here is the diffraction grating for this one. I'm just going to set it on top like I did with the other one and, and tap it down. And here is the charcoal. And I'm just stick blending these to make sure the powders are mixed in completely so that there's no clumps of powder or anything on the top. I wanted to make sure everything was very evenly dispersed.
yeah, just like before, I'm going to tap out the air bubbles as best as I can. And then I'm going to put the little diffraction grading sheet on top. And press it down. Now because I didn't use any water discount or anything, I left these to sit for a couple of days. I wanted to make sure they were completely set up before I tried removing them from the mold. I didn't want the plastic sheet to stick to the top and peel up any soap with it or you know I didn't want anything to go wrong that could affect the uh, experiment so um, I let them sit up for a while. I've left them in the molds and I'm just peeling the plastic off. I just wanted to see if there was any rainbows at all. And here's the first one. This is really hard to see especially on the camera so what I've done is um, just move the lamp Because I found that with, unfortunately, you know, the nice light lighting there is not going to do it. We need to have direct light. And there in the shinies are some beautiful rainbows. I don't know if the camera picked this up properly, but it's definitely there. So I'm very happy with that one. So the plain soap worked just fine. And uh, then there's this one. It had the titanium dioxide in it. I peeled back the sheet. And there, a tiny, a tiny, tiny piece of shiny. And it has picked up a tiny bit of rainbow. Of course, this is probably not going to show up on the camera, but in real life, you can just barely see a hint of hollow. And then here's the one with the charcoal. I wasn't sure what to think because of all the ashing, but sure enough, anywhere there isn't ashing, you can see some beautiful rainbows. And this one turned out the best, I think. At least it's the, the one that looks the best on camera. So I'm just going to take these out of the mold so that you can see them up close without the uh, sides of the mold in the way. I'm trying really hard not to touch the surface. But here's how it looks. I think this came out really nice. I really like the rainbow effect. I'm actually honestly very surprised that this worked at all because of how thick the soap batter is. Um, you know, how many additives I had to put in this. Uh, with the charcoal and then the titanium dioxide and the other other one. Um, here we go, you can see once I get it tilted, once it picks up the light you can see there's definitely some rainbows there. And this is the last one here. I'm gonna put a little circle around that shine just in case it's hard to tell what I'm talking about it's right there I'm gonna turn it and see if you know maybe a different angle pick up the light better it, this just is not coming up on camera as nicely as I would have hoped but the experiment was a sort of success what can I do with this pretty much nothing like I said if you know in shipping and packaging it's very likely that the rainbows will get damaged but um, I think it's fascinating that it actually worked at all so will this hollow, will this become rainbows? It definitely works, but it's not very practical. I just thought it was a really neat idea and um, I'm really glad that uh, Anne Reed posted that video, it gave me some neat inspiration. Hopefully all of you will get some of this uh, plastic sheeting and give it a try for yourself. I'll leave some descriptions down below and some links to her video. And uh, you know, as always, thank you for watching my videos. If you enjoyed this, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing. I post videos every Monday and Thursday, and occasionally I'll drop one of these random bonus videos for you to see. Thank you for watching. You have a great day.